Because God got a season for you. And if you trust him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. All of our Mount Ephraim family, we are so happy that you're joining us this morning. Let's get started with an amazing devotion by our anointed deacons, Deacon Jason Raddick and Deacon Roger Long. Amen, amen. Good morning once again. If you know that the Lord has been good to you, and I'm talking about if you know that you know that the Lord has been good to you, you know you ought to show some sign because God has truly been good to us. He's allowed us to come back once again into his house just to give him some praise and, and glory and honor. And he is worthy of our praise. So we're just going to have a great time in the Lord today. Come on, D. Come and go to the land. Come and go to the land. Oh, won't you come and go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Oh, won't you come and go? To that land where I'm bound, oh, nothing but joy in that land, nothing but joy in that land, there's nothing but joy in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound, there's nothing but joy. In that land, nothing but joy. In that land, nothing but joy. In that land, where I'm bound, there's no more sickness. In that land, no more sickness. In that land, oh y'all, no more sickness. In that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound, oh, no more sickness in that land, no more sickness in that land, well, no more sickness in that land, where I'm bound, all I have a father in that land. I have a father in that land. Well, I have a father in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Well, I have a father in that land. Yes, I have a father in that land. Yes, I have a father. In that land where I'm bound, well, I have a savior. In that land, yes, I have a savior. In that land, well, I have a savior. In that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound, oh, I have a savior. In that land, I have a savior. In that land, yes, I have a savior. In that land, where I'm bound. Now, don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Well. Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Oh, don't you want to go 
to that land, Lord. Don't you want to go to that land? Well, don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Amen. Amen. As I was riding in this morning, I heard Luther Barnes singing this song, and it touched my heart. And it was about this scripture, the 121st Psalm. And King James reads it as such. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this that time forth and even, and even evermore. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Let every heart say amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, once again, Father, we find ourselves in the need of prayer. First and foremost, dear Father, we just come to you just to say thank you, for you have been so good to us. You've allowed us to go about our separate ways this week and to go about our separate vocations, dear Father, without hurt, harm, and danger. And for that, this morning, we say thank you. You have provided our needs, dear Father, including food and shelter and resources. And for that, again, dear Father, we say thank you. We are privileged, dear Father, for even during these times, we are still able to eat from your table. We're still able to break the bread of life, dear Father, as we share and as we listen to your word, dear Father, and hear what thus saith the Lord. Everyone in the world is not so privileged this morning, dear Father. We recognize that. And we say thank you. But two, dear Father, we come to you at a time where we are burdened. Your word says, dear Father, that your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. All right. This morning, dear Father, our burdens are heavy and we want to bring them to you. We live in a world, dear Father, that is teetering and tottering on the brink of chaos. Dear Father, we have medical power and capital power, dear Father, but they are not meeting our needs. Dear Father, we have political power and those holding it, dear Father, and not using it for the means for which it was made. Even this morning, dear Father, military power has no place for even those in power in the military, dear Father, are not standing up and speaking out the way they should. So this morning, dear Father, we address our needs, not to those powers, but to the one who has all power. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. And this morning, dear Father, as we come to you, our hearts are heavy and they are broken. Across this country, dear Father, in the most powerful country in the world, all right. men and women and children are in bread lines because they can barely make ends meet. My Lord, have mercy. In this country, dear Father, people are being put out of their homes, left and right, older people, children. Right. Dear Father, our hearts are breaking. It's all right. Our children are being taught at home by some parents who can't even read and write themselves, dear Father. Yet it has been put upon them, dear Father, to teach and instruct their children. This is not the way things should be. My Lord. We know this is not your, dear fa your fault, dear Father. We know that this is the fault of a system which is not governed by your authority. We know that this is the fault of a system that does not adhere to your words, dear Father, to consider others to be greater than themselves. And this morning, dear Father, we turn these matters over to you. We know this morning, dear Father, that you do have all power in your hand. And whether or not you decide to act we're not concerned dear father with it 
for we know that you can and you have the power to and that's enough for us so this morning dear father we bring these things to you trusting you to do yes. what is right yes. dear father according to your will and just have your way yes we also pray this morning dear father if it is your will that you might just continue to keep your hands on the older members of Mount Ephraim, yes, dear father yes, help them to appreciate dear father that we respect love and adore the lives of service that they have lived all right for these good soldiers of the cross dear father have served a fine example for us all and as we think of them dear father we think of the words of david even when i am old and gray all right do not forsake me until i have declared your power to the next generation yes, sir. All right. let this be the case with the older members of mount ephraim dear father and to dear father this morning we lift up our pastor and our first lady we thank you for these two people of god dear father that you have placed in this congregation to help lead us and serve serve as the under shepherd during these difficult times for dear father their guidance has been uh, significant for all of us dear father and we just want to say thank you for the love and the service that they continue to put forth we pray dear father that you might continue to keep them in the palms of your care dear father continue to provide for their needs continue to watch over them dear father and continue to keep them safe all right sir. and then too dear father we recognize that we have sinned and we have fallen short of your expectations of us well, we realize that we have said things we shouldn't have said gone places we shouldn't have gone have mercy. and then even the things we said we would do dear father we have not done all right. and for that this morning dear father we beg you for your pardon yes. we ask you to forgive us for those sins dear father and we just pray dear father that you might make us to be better people today than we were on yesterday step by step minute by minute dear father help us to draw closer to you help us to hide your word in our hearts dear father so that we might not sin against you and then dear father we just pray that as a church as a congregation you might continue to let us be an example of all of those in this city all of those in this state and all of those in this country dear father help us dear father to make you proud help us to be the one church in this whole community that is trying to do your will and is adhering uh, to your word faithfully dear father again dear father we just thank you for everything that you have done for us but most importantly dear father we thank you for the ransom sacrifice of your son jesus christ who died on the cross for our sins dear father this is the prayer of mount ephraim this morning and we ask all of these things in the name of your loving son our blessed savior jesus christ amen 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 we pray that the lord will hear our prayer and grant unto us his peace blessed be the name of the lord amen amen i woke up this morning by the power of god said i woke up this morning by the power of god said i woke up this morning by the power of god oh, everything moving by the power of god said i woke up this morning by the power of god well i woke up this morning by the power of god said i woke up this morning by the power of God, oh, everything moving by the power of God. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I can say amen by the power of God. I can say amen by the power of God. I can say amen by the power of God. Oh, everything moving by the power of God. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh. Shall I go? I can wave my hand by the power of God. I can wave my hand by the power of God. 
can wave my hand by the power of God. Oh, everything's moving by the power of God. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. Shout hallelujah by the power of God. I can shout hallelujah by the power of God. I can shout hallelujah by the power of God. Oh, everything's moving by the power of God. I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. I found in Him. A Resting place and he has made me glad. It's a moving, it's moving by the power of God. It's a moving, it's moving by the power of God. It's a moving, it's moving by the power of God. Oh, everything moving by the power of God. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Said I woke up this morning by the power of God. Well, I woke up this morning by the power of God. Said I woke up this morning by the power of God. Oh, everything's moving by the power of God. Oh, everything's moving by the power of God. Oh, everything's moving by the power of God. Amen. 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 Everything. Everything moves by the power of God, whether you want to admit it or not. And we give him glory and honor and praise. Right. We thank you so much for allowing us again to bring to you devotion and praise this morning. And at this time, we're going to return the remainder of the service back into the hands of our First Lady, Evangelist Lorraine Jockwhite. To God be the glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much to our deacons for an amazing devotion. We are so excited to hear them every Sunday morning. And I just thank God. God has been good. And my heart, oh, I just felt the, the sincerity and the emotion as Deacon Long talked about people and food lines. And thank God this week, keep watching, because we're going to do something about that. Mount Ephraim's got a food giveaway this week. Now you keep watching our Facebook page and you get all the details about it and what we did way back in March for all of our super seniors. I made sure that none of them are paying utilities. They ain't paying for no rides to the doctors, no rides to the pharmacies, none of that. And they want to take Uber and Lyft, they can go free. We did all of that way back in March. And Marilyn Mitchell calls everybody every month, every senior, to find out, are you okay? Is everything all right? That's why they ain't called. They say everything's all right, so we guess the plan is working. Oh, we are so grateful to an awesome, amazing, wonderful God. Please watch that Facebook page for this food giveaway. There's 25 pounds of food in every box, and we're going to have a whole bunch of boxes. So keep watching that Facebook page. Dr. Taylor, what else we got going on? Dr. Angela Taylor. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, and the entire Mount Ephraim Baptist Church family, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our early morning worship experience. We pray that something is said, a song is sung, that will touch your heart, and when Dr. White extends the invitation of discipleship, that you give God your heart. And when we come back together as a unified body, that you give Dr. White your hand. Again, we pray that you enjoy the service. To those of you all celebrating a birthday, 
birthday on today in this past week, we say happy birthday to you. And to those celebrating your anniversary, we say happy anniversary as well. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. The announcements are as follows. We invite you to join us every Wednesday morning at 7.30 a.m. for prayer with the pastor. We had a record number amount of people to join us on this past Wednesday, and we were richly blessed by that experience. We encourage you to look at our Facebook page, our website, get that telephone number and that access code and join us again for our prayer call with the pastor. Please know that we will also put that number and the access code in the comments section of our Facebook post on today. We also invite you to join us at 7 o'clock p.m. every Wednesday for our worship on Wednesday with the pastor. A phenomenal service and a phenomenal time is had by all. We encourage you to add that to your calendar. On Saturday at 6 o'clock p.m., we have Hour of Power again with our pastor, and it is again on Facebook Live. We invite you to participate in that service as well. And of course, on Sunday, we have our virtual services, 7.30 a.m. and 10.45, that you can see via live stream as well as Facebook Facebook Live, we, would, we encourage you to again join us. We also encourage you to, sub to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have one and we would love to have you participate. So again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're looking for your support and we continue to appreciate all that you do. And in lines of support, we would like to thank you for your continued calls, emails, and texts asking Dr. White asking the church office, asking Sister White, how can we continue to support Mount Ephraim's ministry during this time while we are apart physically? And we're so glad you asked. For those who would like to make donations to Mount Ephraim, we ask that you down the, get, download the Giveify app to your smartphone or to your tablet. And after you make that download, we ask that you select Mount Ephraim. And after selecting my nephew, again, follow the prompts to make your donation. You can also make a donation by clicking the donate button on our website and then follow those prompts as well. For those of you all who continue to enjoy the more traditional form of greeting, of giving, we ask that you make your checks and money orders payable to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church and mail that to Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. As you heard Sister White announce, we will be having a food giveaway here at Mount Ephraim. We ask that you continue to look at our Facebook page so that you can get the date as well as the time. Because again, Mount Ephraim, as we are proving during this COVID situation, is a church without walls. And we want to make sure that we continue to support not only our congregation, but those in the community that are in need. So again, we ask that you continue to look at our Facebook page. But in addition to that, women of Mount Ephraim, we ask that you you get ready for this Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. for our virtual prayer breakfast. Dr. Rice, who serves as the MC of the ecumenical services for Dr. King's services every year, will be our special guest. Dr. Kim Gore Mobley will be our vocalist, and everyone is ready. All we need is every woman in Mount Ephraim to register, make your donation of $10, and then we ask that you go out and bring in five sisters and, al and allow them to participate enjoy and make their donation and participate as well. We ask now, right now, that you download the Zoom link to your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, or your computer so that you might be ready for Saturday. Remember that this is not a Facebook Live event. This is going to be a Zoom event so that the women of Mount Ephraim and all women can come together and fellowship and have that form of intimacy. As we always say, what happened with the Sisters of the Mount stay with the Sisters of the Mount. So please, get your Zoom link together, get prepared, because this will not be a Facebook Live event, but we want to see everybody's face in the place. So we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. This concludes the announcements. Remember, tomorrow is Labor Day. I know we have a tendency to want to get that last barbecue in. Mask up. 
wash your hands, practice social distancing, let's reduce the spread. And remember, as always, remain Mount from Strong. And if you haven't purchased or picked up your mask, we ask that you see Deacon Jerry Alexander. Contact the church and they will put you in direct contact with him. The cost of the mask, $18. And for those of you all who remain interested in getting your uh, Mount Ephraim Baptist Church 50th anniversary pin, these are fifth. $15, and again, we ask that you contact the church to make your order. This concludes the announcements. Brother Roger Long. Greetings, Mount Ephraim, in the name of our Lord. Once again, I am privileged to stand before you, my brothers and sisters, as spokesperson for pastor and wife appreciation. As you know, this is our time that we have set aside uh, to reflect on how God has blessed us through the stewardship of our pastor and first lady, the Reverend Dr. and Mrs. R.L. White, Jr. Yes, now is the time that has been designated to show how much their leadership, compassion, spiritual guidance, preparation, obedience to the word, and faith means to each of us. The responsibilities of pastoring and teaching are among the highest callings. The prophet Isaiah wrote at Isaiah 40, 11, For he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. Of course, Isaiah was speaking prophetically of our Lord Jesus Christ, but our pastor serves as under-shepherd in the house of God and has a duty to emulate the behavior of Christ. Centuries later, James was inspired to write at chapter 3, verse 1, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Let us ponder, if you will, how many times in our own lives that Dr. White, and by extension his helpmate, Evangelist Lorraine White, has demonstrated these qualities of tenderheartedness as shepherd and capable, diligent teacher. Today, I appeal to you by way of two questions that only you can answer. How is your life better because of the pastoring and teaching of Dr. and Mrs. White? All right. And second, when was the last time you let them know that your life is better because of their fine Christian example? Now, as we consider our own ways, I implore you, Mount Ephraim, don't make the mistake of assuming that Dr. and Mrs. White know how you feel. They really don't know how you feel about them unless you tell them and are moved to show them. On behalf of Reverend Dr. and Mrs. White, I thank each of you who have already demonstrated acts of love and kindness in celebration of our pastor and first lady. May our Lord continue to reward you for your kindness and your generosity in a mighty way. Today, I encourage each of you who have not yet made a demonstration of love and appreciation to put your gift for Dr. and Mrs. White in your offering envelope and designate the amount you would like for them to have. You also have the option of addressing your gift directly to the attention of Dr. and Mrs. White and mailing it to them in this manner. Dr. and Mrs. White, care of Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. For members of the congregation and the listening audience using Givelify, you also may appropriate your gift by selecting the Pastor and Wife Appreciation tab. And finally, my brothers and sisters, as a reminder again, on the fourth Sunday of this month, September, is the climax of our Pastor and Wife Appreciation Celebration. 
There is an insightful interview that will air immediately after the 1045 service, so please stay tuned. This is sure to be a treat for all of us. Again, that's on the fourth Sunday of September, September the 27th, after the 1045 service. Mount Ephraim, again, I thank you for your time this morning, and it is my prayer that God will continue to bless our pastor and first lady, each of you, and the great work that continues to be done at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. Thank you. Bless you, sir. We thank Dr. Angela Taylor and Deacon Roger Long for those wonderful announcements and letting us know what's going on. One thing that I wanted to say about the food giveaway that will be this week, that Mount Ephraim will be doing this week, there's 25 pounds of food in each box, and it's a drive-by. means everybody wear a mask, everybody has on gloves, pop open that trunk, we'll, pop, we'll put that 25 pounds of food in your trunk, and everybody keeps on moving. It's going to be wonderful, and I'm so grateful to God that I just was able to confirm this today and on next Sunday I'll tell you who brought us all of this food number one God but God had an angel sitting right in our congregation I tell you all I see you all every week an angel brought us all of this food and we're giving it away to everybody this week now when she's back again by popular demand we love to hear her sing she ministers through the ministry of music and i'm talking about none other than veronica pemberton come on veronica Amen. let's give the sister a hand she sure can sing had some good days. I've had some heels to climb. Right. I've had some weary days. I know we all have. And some sleepless nights. But when I and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low we can hardly see the road and sometimes we even ask the question lord why so much pain but guess what we found out he knows what's best for me and you too more than our weary eyes they can see so instead of complaining we're gonna lift up holy hands and say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord, thank you, lord. we won't complain because god has been good to me than you or this old world could ever be. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good to me. He tried all of my tears away. Turn my midnights into a brand new day. So I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Because God, if you know he's been good, he's been, he's been so good to us. Woo. He. 
So instead of complaining, instead of wondering, Lord, are you there? Because we know he's there. Just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. I know you see everything that's going on. Thank you, Lord. I know how you know, you know, you know how I feel. Thank you, Lord. 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 I won't complain. Veronica, come on back and do a little more. Don't, don't cheat me. Come on back and do a little more of that. God has been good to us. Sometimes we get caught up in what's going on, but he's still been good to us more than this whole world could ever be he's been good 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 to me he tried all of my tears away hallelujah into a brand new day so instead of complaining instead of murmuring I just want to say thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord I know you're sovereign thank you Lord I know you're in charge thank you Lord I know you're in control thank you Lord thank you Lord Veronica Pemberton. So many of us can say he's dried all of my tears away. You know, there is no book written on how to be a pastor and first lady during a pandemic. I'm telling you, God has dried all of my tears away. I've had some tears. God has dried all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. And I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Yeah. Yeah. I know Reverend White is preaching, but yeah. Oh, thank you, Veronica. We got the best preacher in the world, and I need a word from the Lord, and I know you do too. Calling on Dr. R.L. White, Jr. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way, all the way from there to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. He's a mighty good leader. All the way. All the way from Jesus lead you all the way. He led my mother. He led my mother. He led my
Jesus leave you all the way. You know what else he did? He let my father. He let my father. He let my father all the way, all the way from hell to heaven. Let Jesus lead. church say amen. amen I greet you today in the name of him who once said and I if I be lifted from the earth will draw all men unto me that's a generic term meaning men and women to me to this faithful staff Thank you so much for your faithfulness. To my wife Lorraine, who works very hard to I just say what I want done. She has to get it done. I want to thank her for her faithfulness. To Dr. Taylor, God bless you for keeping us aware of what's going on. And every time I see Veronica watching her grow up and we constantly all throughout her school career down in Florida, we've been together. She still is a part of our church she works with her brother-in-law in his church and I want you to know you bless my soul you don't cheat me no more now here amen. amen I see a stranger over there on the drums who is that God bless you son Jason has been amen He's been through so much. But the doctor finally said, you're good to go. And thank God for that. Aren't you glad troubles don't last always? Amen. We praise God for that healing. Beverly Coma, we know you're listening. We pray for you. It's no secret what God can do for what he's done for others. He'll do it for you. Right. Sister Teresa Copeland attacked some weeks ago by this sickness she's on her way back now Amen. and we thank God for that Sister Pat Smith we are still praying for you Dr. Ada Farmer 
is now in home hospice. I went to see her this week and even lying on that bed of affliction she's still trying to encourage somebody else. I want you to know we are praying for you. I want to thank our officers. They went to see her because Morris called me in the car and gave me the situation. Our officers still have been doing their duty, going into the hospitals and the sick rooms, even since the church has been where we are. And I want to say thank you. Evangelist Amanda Cunningham Duckworth, her mother has been released from the hospital. Thank God for that. Yesterday, one of our charter members was a part of this church when there were just 13 of us. He, along with Deacon Robert Owens, were the first deacons in this church. He was buried on yesterday. Our prayers for the family I'm talking about, Deacon Butler Robbins. Some of you heard about the house on last Sunday, I believe, where the gentleman was trying to get out, but the flames wouldn't let him. That was Diane Harper's father. He has two daughters, a member of this church, one who works with our missionaries. I know the son who was living there tried to save his father. I don't know what you're going through with now, son, but I do know that God is still able to do anything but fail. Oh, yes. We're going to have to do a virtual National Baptist Convention this week starts really today, tomorrow. I want you to pray for the convention. One day in that week, we, I will, along with a few other pastors who have pastored in one ministry for 50 years, will be honored by the National Baptist Convention. Thank God for what he keeps on doing. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't announce just where the funeral will be because there are restrictions. And I encourage you. You notice The crisis is beginning to crest and come down now because most of our people have finally got the message. And it won't, won't kill you to put this mask on and I know you want to hug folk, I want to hug them myself. but restrain yourself so that this pandemic, we wanna rush it out of here. So tomorrow, as much as you're gonna have a good time, 
can have a good time with your mask on. Wash your hand more than once a week. <laughs> Amen. I thought about getting me a yardstick to make sure somebody, when they come and they're six feet away. But I've seen God work miracles. And he's still in the miracle working business. Thank you, Deacon, for Roger Long, for being the chairperson for the anniversary. Some of you have always, already made significant gifts, and his was the first. And I just want to say thank you. I continue to look forward to the day when Mount Ephraim can come together again. The Lord has shown me it's not as long as it has been now. And I want to thank this staff for being faithful. I don't have to worry about them. And thank Deacon Jason Graddick for being a point man because I need that. I look forward to when we can come together as a body and do the communion according to the will of God. But until that time comes, let's keep praying. Let's keep trusting, knowing that God will honor his word. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 I need the world. I need the yeah. every Sing a little bit in the bed. I need the Somebody is sick today. Somebody has lost a loved one. Somebody has lost their job. Some is fear, some are filled with fear right now. Oh yeah. Saying, Lord, what comes next? But I want those of you who are watching to know right now that God is still on the throne. Oh yes, he is. And he's able 
Yes. To do anything but fail. I need the not live in sin and feel my Savior's love. Yes. Thy blood can make my spirit clean and write my name above. Lord, we come now in the most humble manner that we know. Well. Just to tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For where you brought us from. Thank you. That our names were not on the obituary list. Oh yeah. Thank you, Thank you for bringing us safe thus far. Yes. But we know that only a God can do what you've done. You stationed an angel by our bedside. Told that angel to watch over us all night long. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And early, yes, sir. right early, yes, this morning, yes, sir. you told that angel to shake us, yes. wake us, yes. and yes, not let us sleep too late. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And when we arose this morning, yes. we still had our right mind. Yes. We remembered our names. Yes. We remembered our dress. Yes. We remembered how to put our clothing on. Oh, yes. And we know it's by your amazing grace that yes. we are right here, right now. But Lord, when we look back oh, yeah. and see the way that we've done you, yeah. we've been disobedient, things you told us not to do, we did them anyhow, things you told us to do, we left them undone, so we beg you right now, Forgive us for all of our sins. Anything that will keep us from having a fellowship with you, 
We pray, oh God, that you move it right now. Right now, Lord. Somebody needs a healing today. Somebody needs a deliverance today. Somebody needs peace today. So in the name of Jesus, please have mercy today. And then as your word goes forward, let somebody hear your word. Come crying, I yield. I cannot hold out any longer. Dear Lord, dear Lord, when we've gone the last mile of the way, when we've got to go reeling and rocking somewhere in a dying room, Lord, we don't know where death is, but one thing we know, if you be there, we won't be afraid to cross the swelling time. Give us a home somewhere where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Somewhere where the weary shall be at rest. Somewhere. Oh, somewhere. Around your throne. These and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble. Trouble in my way. To cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, you will fix it. After a while. After a while. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to pray sometimes. I have to pray sometimes. So much trouble. Trouble in my way. I have to pray sometimes. I have to pray sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. I know Jesus. After a while, after a while, stepped in the furnace, stepped in the furnace, long time ago, long time ago, Shadrach, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Abednego, they were not I know Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it. Fix it for my mother. Jesus, He will fix it. Fix it for my father. Jesus, He will fix it. One day. Jesus, He will fix it. He fix it for me. Jesus, He will fix it. Is there anybody here? Jesus, He will fix it. Who can be a witness? Jesus, He will fix it. I want it, want it, fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. I want it, want it, fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. I don't care. Jesus, he will fix it. What you're going through. Jesus, he will fix it. Don't you know he's able? Jesus, he will fix it. He got power. Jesus, he will fix it. He got power. Jesus, he will fix it. Call him. Jesus, he will fix it. Early in the morning. Jesus, he will fix it. Call him. Jesus, he will fix it. In the midnight hour. Jesus, he will fix it. Won't he, won't he fix it? Jesus, he will fix it. Won't he, won't he fix it? Jesus, he will fix it. Won't he, won't he fix it? Jesus, he will fix it. After a while. Why? Why? Is 
God all right. Wherever you are, you ought to praise him right now. Jesus, he will fix it. Jesus, he will fix it. You can call him. Jesus, he will fix it. You don't have to call him loud. Jesus, he will fix it. Just say, Jesus, he will fix it. Just say, Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, God bless you. Thank you all so much. Thank God for our engineer and the Mount Ephraim telecommunication staff. Thank God for my nephew today because he knows that the Lord is able to fix it. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. Second Corinthians. Chapter 10. Verses 4 through 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Our subject today is a mind thing. It's a mind thing and I neglected to call Stacy Franklin's name Stacy has been going through it, and our prayers are with her. It's a mind thing. Everybody say it's a mind thing. One of the mysteries of God's gifts to every individual is the mind. The dictionary says that the mind is the elements in an individual that feels, perceives, thinks, wills, and especially reasons. Biologists tell us that the brain is the largest organ in the human body. They tell us that the brain is made up of many specialized areas that work together to control the totality of a human being. And God in his miraculous creation, he gave and still gives 
to each of us a mind. Amen. And the conditions that one is born into will generally have a major effect on how this individual will become. The mind is the control center of your whole being. And it is the strongest part of your whole being. In other words, it's a mind thing. Somebody say it's a mind thing. Whatever actions you perform first starts out in your mind. Everything that you can see existed in the spirit world before it became a reality. When God made us, he made us social beings. That is, God gave us a need to depend on each other. And then God gives us parents and guardians to help in programming our minds because it's God's intent for us to help our children to develop a strong and a mature mind to function in society. God also gave each of us a spiritual element and in that spiritual element I have to tell you there is a worldly element and it is intended most of all by God himself that we would have an affinity with God. This affinity means a close connection with God. Amen. Along with the mind, God gave each of us a free will. Yes, we are free agents. God does not make us do anything. In other words, we have a choice as to whether we want to be close to God or whether we want to strike out on our own. Why did God make us free agents? When God made us in his own image, God put a little bit of himself in all of us. Amen. And then God gave us the ability to choose what way we will take in life. Right. Amen. So we have to know that everything that exists, God made it. 
And when God says good, it confirms the act that there is a duality that comes with life. In other words, in order for up to exist, there has to be a down. Forever, whatever, if there is an end, there has to be an out. And for every good, there has to be an evil. Amen. God also made the heavenly host. And God made that heavenly host to give him glory, honor, and praise to God. Amen. Just about like you buy your car, you buy it to be your servant. Amen. But then God gave the heavenly host a free will. And there was in the heavenly host an angel who was charismatic, whose name was Lucifer. And Lucifer became jealous of the glory of God to the point that he wanted that glory for himself. So Lucifer organized a rebellion in heaven and talk a third of the heavenly host into joining in with him in this rebellion. I don't know what he told him, but somehow he was able to fool them in believing that they could take over. Amen. But when this uprising in heaven came, God prevailed and kicked Lucifer and his hosts out of heaven. And his nickname is Satan and the devil. Jesus was there when Lucifer was kicked out because he gave this testimony in Luke 10 verses 18 through 20. And I beheld Satan, I saw Satan as he fell like lightning from heaven. Amen. And ever since that time, Satan has waged a war against the Almighty God. We have to understand that God is a spirit, and so is the devil. Amen. And this devil has been unrelenting in his attacks on the children of God. And whether you know it or not, he has made our minds his playground. Talk to me, somebody. 
even though you are a child of God, he demands a playground in your mind. And even though you may love the Lord, Satan has this ability, not all the time, but he has the ability to control your mind. And from the time that he deceived Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden until today, and I'm sure he'll be doing it tomorrow, he has been deceiving children of God by introducing into their minds unthinkable thoughts. Talk to me, somebody. The Apostle Paul describes Satan in this fashion in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. If we were wrestling against flesh and blood, I'd get me an axe and hit the devil in the head. But he's not flesh, he's an evil spirit. It says that we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. What is Paul saying? That in this life of warfare between the spirits, you have to be careful because your enemy cannot be seen by you. But there is spiritual wickedness in high places. And whether you know it or not, all of these evil things going around in the world are being orchestrated by the devil himself. And it's a mind thing. Once he knows your weakness, talk to me somebody, he never stops introducing temptations in your mind. You stopped drinking liquor years ago. Yet when you get upset, he's right there telling you, you need a drink. Come on, somebody. Or when you get bored at home, uh-oh, he tells you you need to try something new. My bad, my bad, my bad. Preach why. <laughs> He introduces violence in our minds. So when you get angry, he says, why don't you slap him upside his head right now? You got your gun, shoot that rascal. He tells employees, go ahead, steal some of that money. They don't pay you enough anyhow. And if we are honest, sometimes we have yielded to temptation. Preach white. Amen. 
I want to say this. It is not a sin to be tempted. The sin is when you yield. That's why the hymn writer said, yield not to what? Temptation. For it's the yielding. Come on, somebody. But whenever you yield, then that is the sin. And there are also among us, more than you know, so many of us who have allowed ourselves to become victims of strongholds. Everybody in here has a stronghold. That stronghold is that thing that never leaves you. That, string, that stronghold is that one thing that uh, you, you, you about to get perfect on so many other things, but this one thing gives you a problem. Come on, somebody. And now you got to have a scratch off every day. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Every day. Amen. Oh, we have to go to the happy hour every day. Talk to me, somebody. And then some of our strongholds are spiritual. Amen. Hatred and non forgiveness is a stronghold in some of our lives. And if you will admit it, you have a stronghold. I have one and I'm not bragging because God knows if I could just be perfect, I would be perfect. Sometime I wake up in the morning and say, I will not sin today. And then somebody called my phone who I really don't want to talk to. And before I know it, I said, now what in the world is... Have you ever tried to be perfect? I mean, I, I, really, I really tried. But I managed to have some thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking. Sometimes people haven't bothered me, but I was at the place this morning where we stopped to get the fish, and there were two girls and two guys who walked out and the girls looked like they were half naked. I said, now, nah, ain't that a mess? Now, I know that wasn't my business because I couldn't tell her I should have told them. Don't you look at folks sometimes and say, where'd you get that dress? <laughs> if I were you, I would never wear that dress again. You, you just, you, your thoughts control you sometimes. You don't mean to be bad. You don't mean to be evil. But it just comes up before you think about it. Preach white. And some of us have allowed ourselves to become victims of strongholds. Just remember that you have, as a child of God, 
weapons against the devil. I want to tell you this. You may resist the devil. He will flee from you. But he's coming back. And I don't know anybody who's devil proof. Talk to me somebody. And maybe that's your stronghold. You think you got the devil beat. And he's always there whispering in your ear. Have you ever had somebody who bullied you in school? Said all kinds of things to scare you. And now that you've grown up and you see them and they act like they're so glad to see you. Man. Oh my child, you are my friend and you in your mind. You are saying, I still remember what you did to me. And don't come up here talking about you. <laughs> you my friend devil say, look, I know that's been years ago, but go on and tell them off right now. Some of y'all I know you. <laughs> you tell them off. Can I get a witness here? Hey, Amen. As a child of God, whenever you have those bad thoughts, the Holy Spirit convicts you. I have said so many times, there is a difference between weak and wicked. Amen. My father used to have a friend, they both were preachers. But then he stopped hanging with this preacher. And I asked him, what happened to your buddy? He said, well, son, here's where it is. I'm weak, but he's wicked. I said, how do you tell the difference? He said, now, a weak person will sin, gets convicted, and gets right with God. But a wicked person can treat you like a dog and never repent. Some are weak and some are wicked. And the Apostle Paul says, now don't get too upset. In chapter 7 of Romans, he says, I'm that same way. When I want to do right, evil is present with me. Come on, somebody. He said, the thing that I should do, I don't do. And the thing that I shouldn't do, that's what I end up doing. Paul is not the only one. There's some of us in here right now. Can I get a witness here? I say I ain't going to cuss no more. You say that after you cuss somebody out. I mean, you give them a royal cursing. And you go in and the Holy Spirit says, now you know better than that. And you get convicted and you say, Lord, Please forgive me again. Now the devil knows what you just said. And he said, now let's try and see if you really mean you're not going to do it again. And before you know it, when the devil shows up in somebody else, Lord, I know I said I wasn't going to curse, but I got to say something here now. 
Come on, somebody. So the Apostle Paul says, when I would do right, evil is always present with me. Can I get a witness here? The more you want to be right, the more your struggles are. Don't get upset because you have these struggles. Because you have a remedy. And the thing, let me get this right when I tell you this. We say, Paul said, it is not so much what Paul said, but what he was doing was in expressing a truth that was true before Paul said it. And he says in our text today, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This word carnal mean not physically, not a worldly. We have some weapons. I'm not saying you to go home and get your six shooter or your AR. Child of God has weapons stronger than and guns. But our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm talking to you. I'm not telling you to call out your, your stronghold. You wouldn't be doing it anyway. Think about it. You try to hide it as best you can and hope nobody ever finds out that you got it. Look how guilty y'all look now. I guess I'm the only one in here without any stronghold. Oh, y'all saying that I got one too. Well, you didn't have to agree so fast. <laughs> But what the Holy Spirit is saying, whatever your stronghold may be, your weapons are stronger than the devil. And he says, this weapon that the Lord gives us, cast this out those wicked imaginations that you have. Has anything ever come up in your mind you wonder where did that come from? Amen. And it says and everything that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God that our weapons are stronger than the devil. And you know what it does? It brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What is he saying? He is saying that Jesus is stronger than the devil. And now you got a weapon that the devil can't stand. And that weapon is not your excuse, Lord, you know I wouldn't have done it. Your weapon is the name of Jesus. For it is at the name of Jesus. He 
every knee should bow. At the name of Jesus, he gives us victory over the devil himself. You know what I learned? Why sometimes we can't get the victory because we don't want it. Because sin is a show good, ain't it? <laughs> it ain't it good. Come on, tell the truth. I'm talking about whatever that stronghold is, that's, that's you. You, you. You like it so much, and then you hear me talking about the Lord wants you to give it up. Preacher, as we night and come to last Sunday, I don't want you to convict me. <laughs> you must have been looking in my my room. So don't remind me I have to give up my stronghold. I'm trying to get one of my credit cards. Y'all wonder what I'm doing in, in this robe here. Give me one there, man. Not anybody can call on that name of Jesus and get results. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to have to keep this one, baby, because you've been using it too much. <laughs> it's an American Express. When you go in the store and the clerk says, Will that be cash or charge? You back up, charge! And they say, stick your card in the machine. Come on, somebody. And you stick it in there. And the machine catches fire and spit it right out. And they try to make it nice. We're so sorry, but it, it just didn't go through. What they are saying is, if your relationship is not proper with the ones who back it up, you can't get what you want. Because your relationship is not right. Preach right. So when you are not connected with the Holy Spirit, come on somebody, you said, I heard Pastor White said, I got a weapon in the name of Jesus. And if your relationship is not right, and you said, in the name of Jesus. Now this is my imagination as an angel that said, who did, who did it say? Jesus, no, I don't know about no, no. And you end up disappointed. But this message is to the child of God who knows that yes, I have strongholds, but I have power that exceeds my own power. For it is in the name of Jesus that he gives me victory. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It is in the name of Jesus that God makes what was impossible now a possibility. In the name of Jesus there's a healing what the doctors can't understand in the name of Jesus God will fight your battle if your relationship is right with the Lord so the text tells us that whatever it is that's been pulling you down yeah. Yeah. as a stronghold, 
You don't have to go down like that. And regardless to what you've done in your past, when you get right with God, and you get right with the Son of God, God will fight your battle against the devil. Somebody ought to be getting ready to shout right now. Because you ought to know that you don't, you're not in this world by yourself. And when you're going through some things, you got some help. But the problem is, too often, we won't ask for the help. I told you a few weeks ago, and there was a man who said to his son, go pick that rock up and bring it to daddy. Little boy trying to be obedient. He went, but the rock was too heavy for him. So he came back and said, Dad, I, I couldn't move it. He said, son, go back again. And this time I want you to give it all you got. The boy went back again. And he couldn't move it. He came back and after a third time, he said, Daddy, I just can't move him. He said, son, the reason you couldn't move it is that you didn't ask for help. What you mean? I've been standing right here with you. And you've been trying to move it by yourself. All you had to do was ask me. Come on, somebody. And I would have helped you move. That's what God is saying to some of us today. That you allowed your strongholds to bring you down. But you have not used all of what is available to you. The Lord is saying to you, I can move it if you just ask for my help. Because when you think you can, it ain't nothing but a mind thing. That's why I made up my mind that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I don't know about you, but before I leave home in the morning, I turn around and ask the Lord, come and go with me because I know before the day is over, Satan will try to attack me. Can I get a witness here? So in other words, the older people used to sing a song that says, take Jesus with you all the way I heard so many sing this song that I sang it earlier today let Jesus lead you all the way and why do I want Jesus to lead because he's a mighty good leader I need some witnesses here the reason I want the Lord to lead me 
because he'll never leave you by yourself sometimes when you're going through so much you may think the Lord has forgotten about you but I want to tell you this you can't go through life without some struggles you can't go through life without hardships and you can measure where you are in the Lord by your hardship you see if the devil <clears throat> knows he got you he doesn't want to spend any time with you but he goes after the preacher the Sunday school teacher he goes after the deacon oh I wish I had a witness here so when you are going through something and you know that Jesus is on board you can sing that song and be not dismayed whatever the time God will take care of you have you ever sung that song have you ever needed the Lord and when you needed him the most didn't he step right in on due time so I tell the Lord take my mind use it for your glory use it in your service won't he do it somebody ought to praise him right now I'm so glad that I'm on the Lord's side anybody on the Lord's side won't he fight your battle for you you ought to tell him thank you oh thank you God is so good that's why I stand up here and when I look back over my life and the hardships and the things that I had to go through if it had not been for the Lord on my side I wouldn't be here today I got to tell him thank you Thank you. They used to ask, what do you think about Jesus? Somebody else would moan, he's all right. He's all, all right. And then they might ask you, how you know he's all right? They may not have the English right. They say, I done tried him. And he's all, all right. He's all, he's all right. And sometimes when I think about him, what he did for me, out on Calvary how he allowed them to nail nails in his hand pierce him in his side give him vinegar for water but he never said a mumbling word now he has the right to control my life so if you ask me what do you know about Jesus I'm going to tell you, he's all right. He's all right. 
So what would you do with the message today? Submit your mind to the Lord. And he's able to pull down some strongholds. Sometimes you need intensive care. The Lord has to make you all over again. That's why one little prayer is not going to do it. That's why Jesus said pray without ceasing. When you get up in the morning say Lord you know my stronghold I'm asking you to move it. You got to pray more than one time. You got to pray till something happens. And is there anybody in here know that God is able to deliver you out of whatever evil you're in? He's able to change your whole life. Do you receive this message today? Then you can say I'll be all right. Then I know the devil won't leave me alone. But I'm going to be all right. And the reason I'm going to be all right. Because the Lord will take care of me. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Sunday, it will be like Sunday. 
When I see Jesus, it will be like Sunday. It's gonna be hallelujah. It will be like Sunday. And then I'm gonna move. It will be like Sunday. The Hallelujah Boulevard. It will be like Sunday. I'll shout. It will be like Sunday. I'll shout. It will be like Sunday. Troubles are over. It will be like Sunday. Will you meet me there? It will be like Sunday. Every day. Be like Sunday. Every day will be like Sunday. Oh, after a while. After a while. Is that all right? Yeah. Is it all right? Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. You don't have to wait till you get there. Yeah. You can praise him yeah. on this side. Yeah. I call that anticipatory yeah, prayer right, because it lets me know yeah. that I might not have it now, yeah. but God will. Yeah. Won't He give it to you? Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna praise Him yeah. for what He's already done. Yeah, I'm gonna praise Him yeah. for what He's doing right now. Yeah. But most of all, yeah. I'm gonna praise Him yeah. for what He's about to do. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Now this is when the Holy Spirit takes over. Can anybody feel him in here right now? Thank you, Lord. If you can feel him, thank you, Lord. Say yeah. You don't know how blessed you are. Thank you, Lord. Because some people oh, yeah. can't feel a thing. But if you know that the Lord is touching you right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jason. Thank you, Lord. I know you've been through something. I talked with you. And I know how burdened down you've been. But can I get a witness from you? Want the Lord heal your body? Yes, sir. Why don't you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I gotta Lord. say thank you, Lord. I want you to make that organ say, thank you, Lord. Somebody at home now. You ought to say, 
He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. You can lend her out. I know you're watching. Thank you, Jesus. Over a month ago, he gave me a call and said there were 11 members in his family who had been brought under that virus. 11 members. But we kept calling on the Lord. And a little bit over a week ago, I talked to him. And he said, I want you to know every one of them have been healed. All right. All right. If he were here today, he would tell you he's all right. to stop and I got another service to go. I can't spend all my energy this time but I feel good right Thank now. You, Lord. Sometime when you start to feeling good yes. I let the next time take care of itself. I got to praise him Hallelujah. right now. Glory! So when you see your friends and they tell you, I just can't do it, just tell them, no, it's a mind thing. Yes. Right now. But with Jesus in your mind, yes. you can do all things. Yes. I didn't know 10 people could get together and have such a good time. Amen. But when I think about it, the number you see now is all down there from hand 50 years ago. But God has been so good. And I want to thank those of you who are watching. We get calls from across the country. Amen. I hope Brother Ricky Burt will be in Seattle, Washington, where they're having some of the troubled times. I hope you're listening today because God has not let you down. Amen. I want to thank you. Thank you who watches every Sunday for your prayers, for your donations. Thank you for calling during the week. As Dr. Taylor told you, last Wednesday at 7.30, we had the largest number yet calling in for prayer. Thank you for praying with us. Thank us for your, your donations. Because when we got started on this journey, we didn't know how we were going to plow through, but we came by faith. Mm -hmm. And God just keeps on blessing. Thank you. I want you to tell somebody else that you need to turn Mount Ephraim on on Sunday morning because they be making so much noise in there. I know it got to be more than 10 or 12 in there. 
and you just join in the noise. I see my, my cameraman waving like this today. They are, they are told you can't get in the circle because you might miss something, so they're supposed to be cool, you know. And I know up in the audiovisual room, yeah, you had to be touched today. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in, he touches us. Let me thank you, every one of you. Let me thank the officers in the room for counting what gifts that come. So what God has done, given us in every area that we've needed, he's given it to us. I didn't even ask this group to come and back me up. They just started backing me up. They didn't know I was going to tell them, all right, you be here every Sunday. <laughs> Amen. And uh, they, I had one that sneaked away from me. <clears throat> Couldn't catch it because she's out there in San Francisco, but she back in now. I ain't going to let her go until the dead pandemic is not. <laughs> Amen. You ought to have heard her testimony. We're getting ready to go, but you remember that last testimony you made about how many years it has been since? Can, can you open her mic up there? You, you give that testimony. It has been, I used to be on drugs, cocaine, snort cocaine. And on October the 12th, about 13, 15 years ago, God delivered me. I fell on my knees and I asked God to take this taste away from me. And right then he took it away from me. And I thank God for that. I was messed up. All right, all right. But when I came to Mount Ephraim and heard the word of God from our pastor, Dr. White, and our lovely first lady, and just put the word of God in my heart, I just thank God for delivering me. And he will deliver you if you trust him. Amen. Amen. And I didn't tell you, I didn't tell you to preach that little sermon. <laughs> That's a wonderful testimony. Amen. God bless you. Lee. And we have hundreds of people around with the same testimony. God bless you. Let's get ready to go. Amen. Sister Pemberton, thank you so much. You bless this day. I want everybody to move with me today. We're going this way first. Call me, call me, call me, 
Call me, call me, call me, call me. Now may the grace of our once crucified and risen Savior rest, rule, and abide with this his people now henceforth and forevermore let's sing together Amen. Wonderful day. God bless you all. Thank you.